Greetings, unsettled souls. That one's way off. And you are listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangy doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. Welcome aboard, friends. A lot of you like when the... That's perfect. A lot of you don't like when all the shows go together. Some of you do, some of you don't. Tonight's one of those days when none of the stories go together. Before I get started, I need to explain something that I got roped into thanks to DJ Aram. Um, I did not want to be a part of Facebook, and I made a pledge that the show was not going to be a part of Facebook until they allowed us to use the name The Correct Views. Low def, high def, hello. Well, I have kept that promise. Unfortunately, I do need the Facebook for purposes of passing time. Why? Because even if uh, Serenity and I, who isn't here right now, but if uh, Serenity and I decided not to use Facebook, the other three, I mean, four members of Passing Time are already on it, depending on if we have a guitarist or not. You can count Link. Uh, there's five members in the band. They're on it. I mean, no matter how you add it up, we're going to get outvoted. For purposes of keeping contact with fans, I'm on Facebook for the band. I have kept my promise, and the correct views will not beyond Facebook until we are allowed to call ourselves the correct views. Christelle, you with me? Yes. Did I break any promises at any point? None whatsoever. Is the correct views on Facebook? No. Perfect. Uh, this is the dismal Democrat debate. Now, the reason I'm laughing at this is, uh, Christelle, do you consider yourself slightly more um, uh, current with modern issues of importance than most of the people that you know? Uh, slightly. Okay, great. Did you have fun at the two Cleveland Indian games we went to? Oh, yeah. Great. More than I thought I would. Well, Hillary Clinton is trying to say, well, actually CNN, I should say, is trying to say that people are not going to tune in to the Democratic debates like they did the Republicans. But, uh, The reason for that is because uh, the Dodgers, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Chicago Cubs are playing. Now, there's two problems with this. The first one I need Christelle for. The second one I don't. First problem is uh, they are assuming that people that go to sports games are not politically aware. Now, Christelle, am I wrong in saying that you put a whole bunch of time into this show. Even when you're so mad at me, you'd like to kill me. You still put lots of hours into this show, don't you? Oh, yeah. And uh, you do know what's going on, but wouldn't you like to know if the Cubs go all the way? It would be interesting. Okay, great. Espe- interesting. Especially since she's against Ariana after he hit the Pirates batter. She's still mad about that. Um the, I think he did it on purpose. I don't think he did it on purpose, but he, yeah, Christelle is still mad about Two it. Two times? Yeah, Christelle is, it wasn't the same guy. Christelle is still angry. It was, I mean, it's the same picture. It wasn't the same batter. Right. The other thing is, they're saying it's due to Donald Trump. Well, I'm an Indians fan. That means I take a lot of pain. I'm an Indians fan. So... I know that the Indians and the Astros and a few other teams, like the Pirates, who aren't in it anymore, uh, they were fighting for their wild card slot during the Republican debates. And yet Donald Trump got viewers, didn't he? But now that it's the Dodgers, well, Hillary's not going to get any hits. Why? Why? Is that because Los Angeles is so far left that they're the only people that care? Because I'm dead freaking serious here. They are wrong. They are wrong for the two reasons that Christelle and I just gave you. Listen to this. Kurt Nemo, InfoWars. CNN claims Tuesday's Democrat debate in Las Vegas will draw few viewers because of playoff games between the Los Angeles Dodgers, the St. Louis Cardinals, and Christelle's much-hated Chicago Cubs. However, according to Andrew Tyndall, 
television analyst and author of the Tyndall Report. The primary reason has more to do with the Trump effect than minor complications of the start of the fall TV season and the baseball playoffs. It says the Republican debate drew an estimated 23 million viewers and had elements of a TV elimination contest. In other words, he's trying to say that just because uh, Donald Trump is likely to say something that would be politically incorrect, then you are more likely to tune into it for the dramatic factor than because of any real politics. And that most people that really care about politics are just going to watch the debates. But the people that don't, not going to watch baseball. No, bonehead, you couldn't be more wrong. Let me, at the correct views, tell you what the hell is right. How about that? The reason they're not tuning in is because they know that even though he's an outsider, Bernie Sanders is a nutcase that wants to get rid of your guns and bring us in the direction of communism. We don't give a rat's ass about Hillary Clinton, and nobody other than those two are likely to win the Democratic debate anyway. We want an outsider. Do I love Donald Trump? Absolutely not. Can I deal with him so far? Yeah. I'm a Gary Johnson, Rand Paul person. Um, I understand that Gary Johnson is wrong on immigration. I understand that Rand Paul has no human chance of winning this election unless all of the, everybody on the Republican stage is abducted by aliens. That doesn't change the fact that I, un, that I know that Donald Trump is not exactly what us libertarians have been hoping for. Many apologies to D like a sticker junkie. However, the reason we're dealing with him is because we like him more than Hillary. And more, a lot more than Sanders, too. It's true. And we are not caring about the Democratic debate, not because of the angels, not because of what's on fall TV, but because we have no plans to vote for anybody in the Democratic Party. Eat it, slut. Yes, I said it. Lesbian Swedish bishop wants Christian crosses removed from church to please Muslims. This has to be one of the most despicable stories that I have ever reported upon. PJ Dub, Paul Joseph Watson, April 5th. Those of you on Truth Cam can see it. With hundreds of thousands more migrants set to pour into Sweden, A bishop in Stockholm has proposed removing the Christian church and replacing them with Islamic symbols in order to cater to Muslims. Now, I am a Christian, but I'm going to pretend that I'm not. I'm going to use the anti-Christian argument. Don't you know that Christians killed a bunch of people during the Crusades? Okay, fine. You win. They did, and my religion was wrong for doing so, and I admit it. Let me ask you a question now. Don't you know that radical Islam is killing people now, you damn bonehead? That's what the difference is. With hundreds of thousands more migrants set to pour into Sweden, the idiot bishop in Stockholm has proposed removing grasses from a Christian church and replacing them with Islamic symbols in order to cater to Muslims. How about you tell the Muslims if you don't like Sweden, then get the hell out of Sweden. How about that? Because that's what I'm in favor of saying. We are not going to cater to you. Build your own damn mosque. Go to your own damn mosque. And if you don't like our society, then you can leave our country and go back to the hellhole that you came from. That's what I'm in favor of. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. Bishop Eva Brun, it sounds like Eva Braun, Hitler's lover. Bishop Eva Brun wants to remove Christian symbols from the Siemens Church. Siemens, good name for it. Come on now. The Siemens Church. Uh, what a dick. 
to make the building more inviting to Muslims, reports SVT Sweden's national public TV broadcaster. I would show my wang on air just to make Muslims angry. If I, I swear, if I wouldn't get an X rating. Leasing a room to people of other faiths. It does not mean that we are not defenders of our own faith. Good. Then let's let some Christians in Sweden decide that they want to lease a room. If you don't believe me, look right here. Lease a room. Maybe we want to go into your mosque, your madrasa. And maybe Christians want to lease a room. Better yet, maybe some Jews. I so want to lease a room because it's not the same as defending the faith, right? Seems fair to me. How about getting some of us Christians on Easter th Sunday in your madrasa, bitches? I'm sorry. This is the correct views. And I think that I've gotten too politically correct. I think I've gotten away from who I am. And I'm going to get a little bit more edgy. I'm going to get a little more edgy as this goes because I think I've lost sight of who I am. I think I've censored myself a little bit too much on this show and I ain't going to happen anymore. Does that not mean that we are hostile to people of other faiths? No, it means that we're not taking down our crosses to appease them, you stupid dyke. Bruno, who is the first openly lesbian, and I do love to watch two women make out, so don't I'm not going to go in some safety tree myself. The thing is, I'm not, I'm not proclaiming to be moral. These people are. Brune, who is the first openly lesbian bishop, and I have no problem with it, but she should also let me call her a dyke. Uh, a mainstream church in the world wants the church to be treated more like a public airport where prayer rooms are made available to Muslims. Let me tell you what, dumbass. I'm in favor of making prayer rooms in churches available to Muslims as soon as they give me a prayer room in their mosque or their madrasa. How about that? Uh, smartphone passcodes are protected by the Fifth Amendment, says the U.S. court. Uh, this is Lee Munson of Naked Security. I was actually very, very, very happy to read this. And after all of the madrasa report, I felt that uh, this could really be useful and some good news. If someone wants to view your photos or contacts on your passcode-protected iPhone, they may be able to gain access to the device with Siri. And there's a link right there. If the federal authorities in the U.S. want to see the contents of your phone in the old-fashioned way by asking for your password, they won't get any help, thankfully, from the judicial system. So says Judge Mark Kearney, thank God for him, of the Federal District Court in Eastern PA, who recently ruled that passcodes on all such smartphones are protected by the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The ruling came as an insider trading case between the Security Exchange Commission, and you can read the rest of it. But basically, your passcode does not need to be given to anyone in authority on the grounds that you do not have to incriminate yourself. And that is some wonderful news that you got here on the correct views. All right, friends, WashingtonPost.com. Every minute someone gets arrested for marijuana possession in the U.S. Well, this is very bad news. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down here and read it to you. The nation's law enforcement agencies are still arresting people for marijuana possession at near record high rates, according to the latest national data released today by the FBI. In 2014, at least 620,000 people were arrested for simple pot possession. That's 1,700 people per day, more than one per minute. And that number is an undercount because a handful of states either don't report their members to the FBI or do so on a limited basis. Look at this chart. I wish Christelle was up here. Look at this chart. You can still see it, I hope. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Nationwide, more than one in 20 arrests 
were for simple marijuana possession. 20 years ago, near the dawn of the drug war, which was an awful idea, fewer than 2% were arrested. In other words, as more and more people become accepting of pot, we've got more and more people moving in the direction that is anything but helpful to the cause. Look, I'm going to break it down for you real easy. It is not the government's business what you put in your body at all. If you harm somebody after having done so, we already have laws that deal with harming someone if they've done that. The law, the government has no business getting involved no matter what you put in your body at any time for any reason. That's not an opinion. That is a correct view. Welcome to the show. Hit subscribe. Friends, I want to get, I've got a few more stories to get to. I do want to say real quick, make sure you look up the correct views on Tumblr and make sure you look up Sticker Junkie. S-T-I-C-K-E-R-G-U-N-K-I-E-Y, StickerJunkie.com will give you the best stickers you've ever seen. Design them. Let, him, let David Lake design them. You got to do me a favor though. You got to type in the correct views. It's either the correct views or correct views on his uh, promo code. Because if you do, if you do that, you are going to get the most amazing stickers made better than you ever imagined. And I know because our band uses them. They look like this. That's how good they look. They look like that. You're going to get that quality of stickers sent to you. And you're going to get a discount just because you were smart enough to talk about the correct views when you did it. Also, friends, make sure you look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, M-A-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N, one of the best writers of fiction and political commentary and poetry and vampire stories that you've ever seen. Ooh, you want to read some good stories, make sure you look him up and let him know that you heard about him on The Correct Views, too. Look at this. How student loan debt is turning us into serfs. This is Joshua Cruz from the Daily Sheeple. The medieval era is well known for being littered with feudal societies ruled by royalty and served by serfs who kept the system running with back-breaking labor. Contrary to popular opinion, though, these serfs weren't exactly what we would call slaves. They definitely had more rights and opportunities than many of their ancestors from the Roman Empire who killed Christ, and they weren't owned by other people. Instead, they were tied down. They often didn't have the freedom to move about, not because there were walls and watchtowers keeping them penned up, but because they were beholden to the land. They had to pay part of their income if they wanted to stay on the land and if they wanted any kind of protection. And because their world was far more dangerous than ours, they desperately needed the protection of the lords and their soldiers, which meant that they couldn't risk leaving their land for better opportunities. In most feudal, feudal societies, it wasn't politics that kept people down. It was their financial situation. So where is it going? Listen. Listen. It says in much the same way that feudalism kept its people tied to the land for multiple generations, our current financial system is also producing perpetual surf class, mainly through the insurance of student loans. The issuance, excuse me. Unlike most debts, debts which uh, we have plenty, there is no escaping student loans. I will get to my commentary on this in a minute. You'll be shocked, I promise you. In most cases, and start anew with a clean slate, as a result, many of our citizens are not only carrying heavy debts. They are laying the groundwork for having indebted children as well, and that's because the parents cannot save for the children's college education because they're paying for those that they have already. It says data analyzed exclusively by the AP along with surveys about families and raising student debt loans show that, quote, student loans increasingly belong to Americans over 40. That would be me. This group accounts for 35% of education debt up from 25% in 2004. 
contributing to the surge are longer repayment schedules, more mid-career working return to school, and additional borrowing of children's education. It says Generation X adults. Those 35 to 50, which would be me, owe about as much as people fresh out of college do. In other words, there's no change in generations. Uh, it says Gen X parents who carry student debt and have teenage debt have struggled to save for their children's education. In other words, they, like I said a minute ago, they can't afford to save for their children's education because they're paying off those. And it says that student debt is surpassing even groceries as the primary expense for borrowers. So what has happened here? And you can go to the article for the nuts and bolts on this. But what is it that's actually happened here? I'll tell you what's happened here. First of all, they overpromised the uh, value of an education. And I'll admit, the only reason I got an education in college was to make my dad feel like he'd finally shut up and leave me alone about it. Because really, and he's dead now, really, college education is so overpriced that unless you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer, and even then it might not be worth it, it really isn't worth it. Um, I'm trying to get Christelle to go to a correspondence school, but she won't because she doesn't like to work. But for those of you that will go to work and actually try to save money to do something, it might be better off to do that. Because I'm dead serious, friends. I, I went to school. I have a degree in interactive media technology and music production. I can produce any kind of music. I'm a keyboardist, and I can play anything from Beethoven to Metallica, including the solos. Um, I can build your website. I can write your music, I can do your ads, I can do your talk beds, I can write the script for your ads. I am a Photoshop wizard par excellence. I work in a strip club. Why? Because it pays more than anything my education would give me. What they do is they lie to you about the value of education, but they lie to you about something else too here at 4.20 in the morning. It's actually 4.22. What they do is they promise you a certain rate. Well, my wife and I went through a divorce. My ex-wife, obviously. Not Christelle. And when I moved, they didn't have my address. Before I could give them my address, which I had intended to do, they immediately put me in default raised my rates way beyond what they promised me that I would in fact be paying and racked them up so high that they will be on my credit till the day that I die of old age because I will never be able to pay this off and I have an associate's degree that's how bad it is friends that's why you tune in you want the commentary you got the commentary um chicagocbssocial.com Evanston police officer caught sleeping in squad car. And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you before I even begin. You get your commentary first this time. You had to wait last story. I support this cop. Sleep, my friend. Sleep. I'm happy that you're not out there giving DUIs to somebody that had two drinks when they should have one because they're fine. They're not going to hurt anybody. I'm happy that you're not out there harassing people for loud music. You know what? Sleep. If we need you, we will call you. Do we want the fire department always active? No. We will call the fire department when we need them. Do we want the ambulance sitting in front of our house? No. We will call the ambulance if we need them. Police officers, sleep. Sleep. As a taxpayer, sleep. I don't want to see a cop if I didn't call a cop. I am going to stick up for this person. An Evanston police officer was facing disciplinary action after he was caught sleeping in a squad car. He should not have been. Community activist Carolyn Murray, who was completely wrong, said a concerned citizen took pictures of the sleeping officer in the driver's seat of the police car while parked in a movie theater in downtown Evanston Saturday night. Let him sleep. 
Why do you want him awake bothering people who aren't doing anything wrong? If nobody called a cop, nobody needed a cop. I would like to see more cops asleep in their freaking squad car. Deputy Chief Jay Parrott said the incident is under investigation. I think they should give the man the key to the city. I have no desire to see any cop whatsoever unless I have called him for a specific reason. He doesn't need to be given tickets. We don't need tickets. Let us drive freely on the road. Stay the hell out of our lives. We know how much we can drink and drive just fine. We don't need you looking over us. I'm dead serious. I think this cop should get the key to the freaking city. And I'm not afraid to say it on air. And I will apologize to nobody. And that brings us to the dumb knee of the day. Oh, yes. Many of you know the Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes out once a month. We just gave one of them away. Those that are not dumb enough to make it on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show get mentioned in the Dundee Dum Dee Dum Dee of the Day. And friends, we've got the Dum Dee of the Day right here. Really, how stupid can you get? Listen to this. Let me minimize the view screen here. Oh, come on. Fox star slams NRA, then admits he's a member. Now, Christelle didn't know what the NRA was. That'd be the National Rifle Association. Listen to this. I'll let this play in the background while I read it. And they're probably going to give us an ad, so we need to go ahead and make sure we silence it because we don't really care what their ad is. They can go to hell. Um, Geraldo Rivera engaged in a fiery debate with fellow Fox News, the five co-hosts, particularly Eric Boiling, over the issue of gun control, demanding at one point in the names of those who receive money from the National Rifle Association have their names published for the world to see, and then dropping the bombshell, but yes, I'm a member of the lobbying group. In other words, one of the worst political figure, commentary figures of our time. One of the most useless excuse for a people that ever lived. Somebody that couldn't even get the Al Capone thing right. Geraldo Rivera, he's not even fit to be drugged behind a car. This bonehead decides he wants to give advice against the NRA before admitting, of course, he is a member of the NRA. Listen to this bonehead. I'm going to let this run behind me while I read it. The five debates centered on the recent Oregon Community College mass shooting and the potential for universal background checks to prevent such violence from reoccurring. Boiling said that universal checks only hurt poor people. However, Geraldo Rivera was in favor of them. Yeah, well, guess what? This dumbass is a member of the NRA who he's trying to say is wrong. In other words, it's okay for him to be a member, but it's not okay for you to be a member because you're just one of the lowly serfs and you don't really get a say. Remember, your view doesn't really matter. Well, if you're not in favor of that, then guess what? I'm not either. So what I'm going to do is sign out and I'm going to end it letting you watch this bonehead dumdy of the day dig himself in a hole. I'm not going to dig him in a hole. I'm going to rewind this and I'm going to let himself dig him let him dig himself into a hole, I should say. It's about 4 minutes and 45 seconds long and I'm just going to let it run. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Sam I B Deganji signing off. Make sure you look up the mediaspeaks.com. You'll find the works of Kyle Court, D Lake, and myself. And if you would like to donate to the show, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com. Uh, Christelle isn't listening, but that's okay. Listen to this, friends. I'm gonna let him prove it to himself. Watch. Watch. Oh, Christelle is listening. All right, watch. Watch this, friends. The, the gun show loophole. What the gun show loophole is, is exactly this. Everyone is required, if you're a gun seller, that's your business. You have to have a background check if you sell a gun to someone. You have to, whether it's online or at a gun show. A very small percentage of sold, very tiny, tiny percentage, are sold by private individuals to someone else. And in 30 states out of 50, you do not need a, an extended background check. Think about the, but, and so they want to close that. Now, I need there. to keep commenting or they won't let me use this. So, do you realize how few 
gun violations are ever done through that loophole, by the way. Almost nobody ever gets shot due to it. Every single gun ever sold to anyone requires a background check. Extended yeah, background check. Let me finish this one. No, it's not a good idea. Here's what happens with universal, universal background checks. Here's what happens with universal background checks, Geraldo. Poor people, minorities in, in high crime urban areas, will have to make the choice between buying this gun to protect my family or feeding my family because sometimes it can be upwards of in New York it's eighty dollars in Maryland it's two hundred dollars just for the background check people can't afford to protect their own families instead they decide not to buy the gun so that is really the most done for purposes of political commentary people not if you not require the extended background check because I'll tell you what the bad guys the gangbangers aren't buying their guns from a licensed dealer this is a gun sick nation Pay attention to what he said. The gangbangers are not buying their guns from licensed dealers. Do you understand that? So don't give me this BS about what's legal. They're already buying it illegally. 330 million weapons in this country. This kid at 13 All legal. weapons. All legal. Right. Right, all legal. exactly my point. How does he legally get his hands on 13 well, weapons? What are you suggesting, Geraldo? We, we limit I'm the amount of guns I'm people can buy. I'm suggesting people, that there's a, a universal background check. Back, so the universal background check says, okay, wait a minute. No, a universal background check. What he, what, what Geraldo Rivera is trying to say here is that criminals are going to obey the law. They're not going to buy their guns illegally. They're going to listen to the BS and they're going to subject to this criminal background check. And if their criminal background check says that they can't own a gun, then your average thug isn't going to go ahead and buy a gun. That's what this bonehead right there, Geraldo Rivera, is trying to say. If you buy a gun last week and the week before that and the week before that also, and it says Johnny, you what do are you that? doing with these 13 and, guns? And you're allowed to do that with your universal background check. I, I, yep. You need universal background That's checks. The thing, it's, a, it's a, like a no But that wouldn't prevent right. it. There is the, it would prevent No, 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 no. no. The it Second would, Amendment... The Keep in mind, the last person of major significance in history that wanted to have universal background checks was Adolf Hitler. He then took the guns away from the people and proceeded to put them into gas chambers. Why did they go to the gas chamber? Because they didn't have any guns. not come with a little clause underneath that the says you have, have a limit of the number of weapons that you can have. That's the problem. Do you see what I'm saying? You're that okay, is you're okay with 330 million weapons that. and the only industrialization... Of course, Geraldo Rivera is going to be able to give all three... Get, all of you that own those 330 million guns, you're all going to turn it in because Geraldo Rivera is going to pass a law that says you're going to obey it, right? How many gangbangers right now are looking at my white ass and laughing their ass off because they know exactly where I'm coming from? It's not going to happen. I grew up in the hood. Don't tell me about the hood. On earth that has What's this your solution? Here's What's the your solution? Universal background checks for goodness help. sake. Then why do you oppose it? Why do you oppose it? What's the downside of the it? The downside is for poor check. people who can't afford oh, to, get the, the, to come buy the background check. Around yeah, around one gun to commit the act. It doesn't matter if you had 13 or not. The bottom line is if you follow the procedure, you obtain it legally. That is your also right under the Constitution to do so. need an armed guard in every educational right. institution. Talk about that. One armed guard in every educational institution. You don't need She's right. And you know what? And, and others carry guns. And this guy killed himself when he knew the guns were coming to get him and the cops are on the so way. Had right? Officer so if they were, outside, it would have if been there were Well, so then this, we agree with this. Yeah, yeah that's what that I think point. a lot. You know, And you have people on the right who want more or armed guards, okay? And you have people on the left who do want confiscation. They keep, the president points to Australia as a model, but that was a gun confiscation in Australia. Everyone had to give up their guns. But then they say, oh, we're just looking for sensible background checks, but they're really not. I think the left does want to, they, they want to, they want to take. Yes, the les left does want to take the guns away. For those of you on low def, I don't have a headset anymore. So you guys have no idea what's happening, but you can look the video up guns away. Am I wrong about that? The NRA wrong? is running the Republican half of the Congress of the but, United States. But, you know, you, I want to know who takes He the spoke the badly States. about the NRA. Did you notice that? Now listen. I, I, Democrats Most also. Absolutely. I want everyone who takes money from the NRA to have their, mm -hmm. their name You're published. Right. Aren't you an NRA member? Yes. But most of them are proud of the money from the NRA because I agree with them. They're not ashamed. They're not hiding their NRA. Geraldo Rivera has spent all of three minutes and 33 seconds talking about disliking the NRA. 
and he is a member. In other words, he's one of the rich, important people, and his life matters. You can go to hell. You shouldn't have the same rights. I have nothing else to say, friends. That's why I'm the correct views. Good night. God bless.